Okay, welcome back to another episode of Paul's Workshop. What are you, coughing? Cut. You, you farted. <laughs> hey guys, what is up? We're back with another video that y'all know and love. So today we'll be starting our Scout Crafter Birdhouse Challenge. And if you don't know who Scout Crafter is, he is a he is a fellow YouTuber on the platform that is YouTube. Yes, we are back with another episode of Paul's Workshop, and this episode is the Scout Crafter Birdhouse Challenge. Paul and I have been looking online for some plans, and we have some simple birdhouse plans. We'll put a link below in the description of the video. So, we got one by six pine, and we were originally gonna get cedar, but our, un our local unbranded home improvement store did not sell that kind. And we were gonna get pressure-treated wood, but it turns out that makes birds ill, and we don't want ill birds. Not in our birdhouse. So our first design for a birdhouse is a blue birdhouse, which means a birdhouse that's for bluebirds. So as you can see here, this is what our final model should look like. Let's hope it turns into anything similar in production. Okay, first cut we're going to make is a four inch by four inch cut for the floor in the birdhouse. We're gonna be using our 10 inch power miter saw to make the cut so it'll be nice clean and square then once we make the cut for the floor we're going to drill four holes in the bottom so that it has drainage and it has ventilation so let's get started on that i wonder if birds have a real estate market mark four inches right so at four inches put your mark usually you should make two marks now take your square Draw a nice line. Okay. I don't know why that looks crooked. Okay, so we bring that in. Okay. So you're gonna stand to the, to the side, keep your hand off the blade guard, and squeeze. Pull it, squeeze the trigger. <laughs> us to drill four holes in the base and that's what we're gonna do using our drill press from last episode so we're gonna be using our speed our five speed bench drill press to be drilling holes in our wood Done. Keep your hand over here, away from the drill bit. I just want to line it up good. Okay. So, if you want to be a little bit more on the safe side, you might want to utilize a clamp. Like, like, show. And your result should look like this. So our next step would be to cut the corners off of this to help air circulation go better. And there, we have two ways of doing so. One is on our sander and the other is on that. We, when you measure, you want to take your speed square and just line it up to the corner. It's that simple. But if you want to, if you want to do it in a certain way, then take, then have the bottom go like a million, a centimeter away from the bottom of the wood. And then you're just going to go like, like. 
and in the end, you should get something that looks somewhat like this. And you're gonna just take your miter saw and... <laughs> Take the other one. Don't squeeze the trigger. Get the measures. We're gonna line them up. This, by the way, is the only power tool that ever had me have to go to the hospital and get stitches. Fun fact. Okay, the other way that you can do this is with a belt sander. We have a bench top belt sander here, central machinery. And uh, I'm gonna show Paul how to do the first one, and then he's gonna do the second one on his own. Okay, well done, pull it away. Okay, turn off the machine. Okay, let's see how you do. Hold it up into the camera, we can see it. Not too bad. So we're gonna need a 13 and a half inch cut for the back and a, thir and a 22 and a half degree bevel. But we can't do that on our miter saw because it is not a compound saw. Uh, we're gonna take our tape measure and we're gonna measure our 13 and a half inches. And I gotta make sure this isn't crooked because I can mess up the measurement. That looked like 13 from here. It, it was. Okay. Bye, Jack. Okay. And then we have our bevel and it should. Can you see that? Okay, and this is one we're definitely gonna do with a little help because we want to make sure we all keep our fingers. All eight of them. Okay. So, ready? Put, all right, squeeze the trigger. Okay, I think we did good. Step is we need to rip these side pieces down to four inches. Okay, one of the most dangerous, most feared power tools in the shop is the table saw. But like anything else, if you follow good safety practices, you set your machine up right, you have all your guards in place, and you use common sense, you'll be, you should be okay. I'm going to use the block that we cut, because this may or may not be an exact four inch, but since this is going to be our base and our sides, this is what we're going to use to rip our sides down. So what I'm going to do is bring my blade up. Can you see that okay on camera? Uh, yeah, it's nice and... I'm going to bring my blade up, bring my fence over. I'm going to go down just a little bit because you want your teeth to just come slightly through the thickness of the wood you're going to use. We're going to lock it down. Make sure our blade guard is square. A uh, great thing about these indexes they're almost never right. Okay. Uh, it's fantastic, isn't it? So now we can, we're going to plug our saw in, and then we're going to rip these pieces. As all the pieces com concluded, we need to put a hole here for the bird and you know, put it all together. You go a little deeper, bud. Is it not going? Go ahead. That's it. Here we have the bottom and the four circulation holes. 
Here we have the predator protector and front. And here's the roof. So now we're going to be sanding them and assembling them. Mm.